what is the church? Well, that's a deep question that requires much longer reflection and many angles and perspectives. But maybe one way to understand the life of the church in the world is to take a look at some stories that Luke told about Jesus. Luke loved to tell stories of Jesus at meals and Jesus at various tables. But there are three occasions in particular where Luke recounts Jesus as the host at a table. And in each of these stories, Jesus does the same three things. He takes bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it. And when Luke writes his volume two in the book of Acts, he describes that one of the early practices of the Christians, the followers of Jesus, was that they would break bread together. And maybe this phrase in Luke's hands becomes a kind of shorthand way of describing the life of the church as bread in Jesus' hand, the life of the church as bread that is blessed, broken, and given. And so I'd like to reflect for a few minutes about what that might look like to understand the life of the church in those three movements. What does it mean to be blessed? For the people of God to be blessed in the hands of Jesus. Well, we can't arrive at conclusions that say that to be blessed is to have life work out just perfectly or to be successful. Luke himself doesn't give us that option in the way he talks about the blessedness and the Beatitudes. But maybe to be blessed is actually to be returned to our our original identity. See, when Luke recounts the story of Passover, he says Jesus takes the bread. And where Matthew says he blessed it, Luke says he gave thanks. And this, of course, is the prayer of thanksgiving that recognizes God as the creator and the king who gives bread. And so in that movement, Jesus blesses bread by giving thanks for it, by reminding one another of where this bread came from. And so I think maybe for us to understand the church as bread that is blessed is to recognize, to be returned to our original identity. Paul gives us a hint of this in Ephesians 1 where he says, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing and then goes on to talk about what that blessing is. It's to be adopted as the children of God. We are returned to our original identity as beloved sons and daughters. Every time the church gathers in worship, we are in a way rehearsing that blessedness in Christ, being returned to our original identity. And then when we think about the next word, broken, we often think of the word broken as a way of indicating that something is no longer working. But for Jesus, brokenness becomes a way to open ourselves up to the grace of God. In Luke 24, Luke tells the story of some disciples on the roads to Emmaus who are in the middle of their disappointment and disillusionment. They think that the one they hoped would, would be Israel's Messiah has died. And they think it's over. And yet, in the midst of their broken-hearted state, they welcome Jesus, not knowing it's Jesus. They think it's a stranger. They welcome Him into their home. And so here we see, in the midst of disappointment and disillusionment and pain, they extend hospitality to a stranger and vulnerability to someone else. And then Jesus comes in and, as the guest, starts acting like the host. And He takes the bread and blesses it and breaks it. And all of a sudden, their eyes are opened and their hearts are warmed and something beautiful occurs. See, I think to be broken is to be opened up to the grace of God. And often it means to be opened up to the grace of God in others, in one another. When the church begins to open up its homes and its hearts to each other in vulnerability and humility, we begin to see the grace of God at work in us, even in the midst of our pain. And then the final movement, this word given. Here we find this in Luke 9, the first story Luke tells of Jesus taking bread, blessing it, breaking it, and giving it. It's the feeding of the 5,000. And what Jesus does in this situation is He says to the disciples, you give them something to eat. And of course they protest and they say, we can't possibly do that. There's too many people and too little food. And Jesus says, you're going to do this. And so then they find these loaves and these fishes and they bring it to Jesus. And we know what happens. Jesus blesses it, breaks it, and gives it, and it it, it multiplies. But see, the key in the story to me is to whom Jesus gives the bread. He doesn't give the bread directly to the crowd. In fact, He gives it to the disciples. I think this is a picture to us, a reminder to us, that the mission of God in the world happens through the church. In fact, God has chosen to allow His Spirit to work in the world through us as the church. So he gives the command, you give them something to eat, and then he performs the miracle of multiplication, but he invites our participation. We get to join this miracle. We get to participate in this. So to be given 
is to allow the Lord to use what He has given us, placed in our hands, for the sake of the world. All of our churches need to understand that our presence in the world is not for our own sake, but really for the sake of the world. We are here in the city for the sake of the city. If we understand the life of the church occurring in these three movements, then we understand that when we gather, we live out our blessedness. We rehearse our blessedness. This is the gathered life of the church. And then when we break bread and engage in hospitality and vulnerability with, in community with one another, broken is a way of speaking of our communal life together as the church. And then as we remember that our mission in the world, we are given for the life of the world, just as Jesus was the bread of heaven given for the life of the world, then we understand that this is our missional life of the church. And so here we are, the table becomes not only the centerpiece of Christian worship, the table itself becomes the paradigm for understanding the life of the church, to be blessed, broken, and given.